Southern California uh, today. Now let's uh, bring up the uh, flight plan. Um, so I don't really know how if we can program a proper task in the flight computer, but um, uh, so this is just a screenshot um, from the loading screen. So we're going to Santa Barbara to Magic Mountain, and then we're going to try to hit the uh, Griffith, Obs Griffith Observatory, and then uh, to uh, uh, Mount Wilson, and then Mount Bali, then San Gregorio, then San Jacinto, and then land down in Palm Springs. So. This could be a challenging flight. Uh, if you want to join in, there's the flight plan. Check it out, and let's uh, let's let's do that. That'll be fun. Here's the weather that I have set. So let me. Um, uh, yeah, can I go back to? Okay, wind. We're gonna do the southwest wind, so it'll be kind of pushing wind into the mountains. Won't be a uh, won't be a perfect tailwind, but. Um, a little bit uh, a little bit tail and then clouds we have some medium cloud layer here uh, so that you can see my cloud settings cloud base 6,000 feet um, that could make for um, somewhat challenging conditions so we're not gonna get in ridiculously high like 18,000 and still be kind of somewhat realistic for an epic soaring day in uh, September uh, so this should be, um, you can see the coverage and stuff there. So, um, and then uh, let me, yeah, if I close that, you can see my other settings for pressure, humidity, and temperature on the day. It's a hot day. And if we turn on 3D thermals real quick, real quick, you can see we have a lot of thermal activity. So that's good, pretty much under all those clouds. And I am uh, getting a notification that Twitch says I'm streaming. Like, thanks, Twitch. I know that I'm doing that. So you can, uh, we can ignore that. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Okay, so I am almost ready to go. Let me just check, make sure the stream is there. Okay, and I'm going to share this to the various uh, social media. Not, I'll post this on Facebook. And uh, Santa Barbara to Palm Springs. I uh, will post that. Yeah, close that. And then uh, check the YouTube stream. Whoops. And make sure they're muted when I bring them up. I will share that to Facebook as well. Just to spam on Facebook and get everybody. So everybody knows. Uh, join in. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm live uh, online right now in the game. Uh, it would be cool if anybody wants to uh, join in with me. Uh, screen name is Designed by Dave. And I am on the server uh, West USA, so I'm online right now. As are you can see, there's uh, there's a few others around here. SoCal should be pretty uh, pretty busy air traffic. So uh, okay, let's go flying. And uh, I think I'm going to since I can't arrow tow this glider, I think I'm going to. Uh, I don't really want to do a winch launch. I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to cheat and I'm going to slew it uh, to the altitude. And we'll skip the whole uh, launching sequence here. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, let's uh, altitude show 13 feet. That sounds about right here in Santa Barbara. We would be very low. So let's go up to uh, you know 2,500 feet. That's kind of a reasonable starting altitude. Uh, you know, a tow would take you to very beautiful Santa Barbara, 2,501 feet. I think that's pretty good. Okay, let's get back in the let's uh, uh let's pause the simulation and let me close this because my neighbor has one of those Yelpy dogs and they think it's cool to just let the Yelpy dog sit there on their patio and just yelp. I don't know. Anyways, a little annoyed about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, let's go flying. Uh, uh, hopefully, we get some people joining in. We had some yesterday. That was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, let's uh, exit the slew mode and uh, get my uh, get my view the way I want it. Exit the winch controls and get the volume tone volume on four. Okay, and we're going to unpause. 
Then you gear up. And, uh, oh, this thing has a bug. You have to turn the computer off and on to get it to uh, beep at you. Master battery off, and then you uh, turn it back on again. Okay. So there's some lift right over the airport here. Twenty five hundred feet, climbing right away, pretty good. We are over Santa Barbara, beautiful Santa Barbara, California. And we got lots of clouds, should have lots of lift. We're gonna try for a pretty epic XC flight here. First thing though, we gotta get some altitude. If we can get up to cloud base, we can uh we'll be in good shape. A lot of cloud streets. Idea is to uh, here take off here at Santa Barbara and fly to the west to uh, Magic Mountain, Six Flags Magic Mountain. You just have a lot of fun there, and then we'll go to um, then we'll try to uh, don't kind of zigzag across uh, northern part of Southern California. Just checking the stream, make sure it's watch, make sure it's running. Got uh, some people uh, watching already. That's great. Welcome to the stream, guys. If you guys want to join in with me, screen name designed by Dave. I'm over Santa Barbara, California. And we're going to fly to the west uh, on the server uh, West USA. Uh, be great to have some people join in. Had some people join yesterday. It was a lot of fun. And uh, so that'll be, that'll be good. This, be kind of, this might be kind of a challenging task. And um, I'm going to bust through some airspace that probably would be uh, illegal in real life, but uh, we're in the simulator, so we can do whatever the heck we want. Climbing up here, altitude 3,000 feet. Not a very strong climb, but it is going up, so we'll stick with it until uh, unless we can find something better. At least it's going up 360 degrees through the turn. I'm flying the Discus 2C from the marketplace. I think uh, Got Friends is the developer. It says it when I turn the instrument off and on. And I have this very colorful paint job. I like that because most sailplanes are pretty boring, just white. So we got some nice colors here. 3,300 feet. We're still climbing here, nice and slow, but it's consistent. Climbing about 200 feet per minute. Cloud base is about 6,000 feet today, which is uh, not necessarily unrealistic for Southern California. Um, this amount of cloud cover is probably not very re realistic. Usually, the clouds would be concentrated over the um, over the mountains, the clouds and the corresponding lift. So to be able to climb kind of right out over here at the airport is eh. Nah, not the most, uh, although it is light lift out here, so maybe if we go to the mountains we'll find a stronger lift. But I want to try to, uh, I'll just stay here in this lift and get up as much as I can. 3,500 feet, I am going up. Just be patient with it. Because if I leave this lift, I might not find uh, any more lift. That's how soaring goes. Some big clouds above me here, so I bet there's some stronger lift to be found. I didn't measure the total distance here. Maybe somebody can do that for me from uh, from uh, Santa Barbara, California to Palm Springs. It's got to be a couple hundred miles. Just kind of drifting back towards the mountains here. I've done a little bit of hang gliding in Santa Barbara. Flown there a couple of times. Really beautiful place to fly. Done some bike riding there. Very, very beautiful part of the world, Southern California. It's one of those places that I should visit more often. Up to 4,000 feet here.
Somebody in the Dark Star uh, cruising through 97,000 feet. <laughs> <coughs> Forty two hundred feet now. Consistent light lift, but it is consistent, it's going up, so we'll just just stick with it here. I had a really fun flight yesterday, I ended up flying for almost four hours. <laughs> I was just gonna fly for like an hour, but we were just having a good time and uh good time flying and people joined in on the stream and uh was flying with me and it was it was very cool. So because I set a flight plan, I'll at least get a straight line on the uh, computer. You can see down here to my next point, and it's going to tell me here on the HUD overlay. So that's yeah, there he goes right there. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's not quite the same thing as having a proper uh, soaring task set up in the computer. I don't know if I can do that on here. I didn't really feel like taking the time to try to figure it out today. Uh, but uh, in the future, uh, maybe we will do that. 4,600 feet. Ah, should have got the uh, refill on the beverage before starting streaming. Santa Barbara Airport down there. Yeah, I'm drifting a bit with this thermal. Instruments show me a six knot wind out of the southwest. It's about what I set to set it to. Let's see if it gets a little bit stronger with altitude as we uh, come on up through 5,000 feet here. It's getting a little stronger, maybe. Set it to Imperial units. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, 11 mile per hour wind. Yeah, so that was a 6 kilometer per hour wind. So now we're at like 11 uh, knot wind here. 5,100 feet. I think with this Discus 2C um, third party glider, uh, I don't think there's a way to do aero towing with it. It does have a winch launch feature. It would be kind of fun to aero tow up. Um, but really, we're just kind of interested in the throwing flight, so that's why I just I just cheated and skipped to the uh, slewing, uh, um, the slew mode to get to altitude here. That's pretty much what you're doing when you're towing up, anyway. So, you know, if you need towing practice, we can do towing practice. But I'm interested in the soaring today. Five thousand four hundred feet, climbing about five hundred feet per minute, two hundred, uh, four hundred feet per minute. Not the strongest thermal, but boy, it's super consistent. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's really nice too. Kind of that consistency is what you're, uh, you know, mostly concerned with. If it's real strong, but it's too small or too difficult to work, too difficult to stay in, then you're not going to make a lot of progress. It can be really frustrating. But uh, here we're, uh, we're climbing nicely through 5,700 feet. Cloud base is supposed to be about 6,000 AGL, so over the mountains here we may be getting to around 8,000. Which should be plenty of altitude in this, uh, in this uh, very high performance sailplane to uh, go places. And we're just clocking around here. Climbing at about, averaging about uh, 400 feet per minute. Altitude 5,900 feet. So we climb over the mountains here in Santa Barbara. A really beautiful looking soaring uh, day here that I, I crafted using the using the custom weather settings. You can start the stream over at the beginning and uh, see uh, what my settings were. Uh, 
Hey, Linda, thanks for uh, checking out the uh, the stream. Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you guys are doing good. friend Linda Dunn's watching the stream. Used to fly hang gliders with her and Jeff. Good people, always kind of people you like to uh, like to see out there. And uh... oh, Oklahoma now and loving retirement. Well, I'm glad you guys are retired and loving it. Uh, I don't know if I would love Oklahoma, but I bet you got a nice situation out there. And. Uh... Climbing up through 6,300 feet here. Looks like we still have maybe another 1,000 feet or so to get up to these clouds. Kind of a piece of cake here. This is light lift, but man, super easy. And uh, somebody down in the airport there. Is the pilot currently under the influence? Uh, are you talking about me? <laughs> Under the influence of what? <laughs> uh, I'm currently not under the influence of anything. Um, although there are some substances that would, uh, um, you know, maybe make this a little bit more uh, fun and interesting, and maybe a more fun stream to watch, that also would be not a very good idea to be using when real flying. But we're uh, in the simulator, so we can do whatever the heck we want. Boy, this thermal is uh, this is like the nicest thermal ever. Sometimes these like light thermals, but really consistent, are just a lot of fun. And, uh, climbing through 6,600 feet over the mountains of Santa Barbara here. We're going to fly to the west. Pretty much just try to cross all of Southern California and hit a few landmarks along the way. And go land in uh, Palm Springs in the high desert. I should have measured the uh, distance beforehand, over total distance. I uh, forgot to do that. Maybe when I get up to the top of this thermal here, I'll pause it and bring up Google Earth, and uh, we can do that with Google Earth. Still going up, nice and smooth, steady, 300 uh, feet per minute. Sixty-eight hundred feet altitude now. So we're getting pretty darn close to these clouds. Have a beautiful soaring day here. Looks like. If you're just checking out the stream, if you never, uh, if you don't know much about soaring flight or uh, you know what kind of weather produces good thermals, I did a, uh, a bit of a, a setup sort of tutorial in uh, my stream yesterday where I showed you the weather settings I picked to generate good thermals and uh, I sort of played around a little bit with it to uh, to get that and um, yeah now those settings work really well for me and at the beginning of this stream you can see the settings I showed the weather settings that I have on as well I'm also playing live online obviously a lot of air traffic here so feel free to join me screen name designed by Dave uh, you can add me as a friend here or um, um, and the server I'm on is uh, uh, West USA, so you should be able to find me on there. Circling up here, and just right about now, about to hit 7,000 feet. There it is, 7,000. We're Santa Barbara, California. Beautiful looking soaring day. This lift is quite a bit lighter now. Kind of looking to see if we can get some clouds suck. There we go, we're getting a lift back here a little bit. I'm gonna top this lift out and then we're gonna head for uh, head west and uh, see if we can tag Magic Mountain, Six Flags Magic Mountain, the uh, amusement park. Used to have a lot of fun there. Used to get the season pass, go a bunch of times. And uh, yeah, it kind of stopped beeping at me, so I think it's time to just start heading west underneath these clouds. 
and see if maybe there's a lift under the clouds. Boy, on these clouds look cool. All right, I think it's time to glide here. Oh, somebody uh, on an A310 there uh, cruising along. That's kind of cool. He's flying a little bit faster than me. Got some lift under these clouds. We might be able to just kind of porpoise fly this whole this whole task and never never turn into thermal again. Uh oh. John Janik just stole one of my KOMs. Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's not very relevant to the stream, but uh, that's pretty cool. Sorry, I'm distracted by emails. Distracted by uh, Strava. And we're just, just, just uh, yeah, getting like some cloud stuck under these clouds here. Super cool. And uh, flying really slow because we're still climbing, but we're heading in the direction we need to go. Now that's some pretty strong lift. I think I should turn in that up to 7,500 feet. Might be able to get up, up a little bit above the cloud base. Here we go. Now we're climbing like 600 feet per minute up through 7,700 feet. Over Santa Barbara, California. Gorgeous looking soaring day. I'm just gonna top this lift out as much as possible. Sort of drift in this uh, southwest wind. Get up as high as possible and then see if we can fly this task, this course. I'll bring up the uh, map again in a second. It shows what we're gonna do oh no you know what I closed it my bad you'll have to go to the beginning of the stream uh, to see the task that we're gonna try and fly but we're climbing good up into this cloud getting up into the white room here look at this uh, looks so cool god the visuals on uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator are just just phenomenal 8,100 feet climbing good Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now we're just kind of right on the edge of the cloud. All right, I think it's time to just head for our goal there. I'm not sure why it says 3,500 feet. I guess I put a custom marker, and I'm not sure if you can change the altitude on those or or what. But uh, anyways, that's where we're headed. That would be uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain. And uh, it's uh, 58 nautical miles from here. So we can fly uh, quite a bit faster. Especially in this lift, we could fly hella fast. I'm going to put some down trim to uh, keep the airspeed up. And this instrument, we can see, uh, yeah, speed of fly kind of right here, about 66 miles per hour. And uh, so that's kind of where we want to fly. And we'll just kind of go through these clouds here because that'll be cool. Airspeed 67 knots. Altitude 8,600 feet. Still climbing, just flying in a straight line. This might be an easier task than, than what I anticipated. I kind of set it up to be, you know, a big, strong uh, soaring day. So I expect to be plenty of lift. and But I don't want to be um, uh, too artificially, uh, you know, tall as far as the altitude goes. Um, this altitude, 8,700 feet, probably not the most realistic here for Santa Barbara. It would take some pretty, uh, pretty uh, epic weather, I think, uh, you know, for that to be the case. Um, so, uh, but it makes it fun. So we're just we're just having fun, and and uh, that's what it's about. And we still just get crazy strong lift here, which means I could be flying just so much faster. So 
So I'm just going to give down trim to get the airspeed up. As long as the variable is still beeping, I can just basically keep going faster. And there we go. Now we just... <laughs> so much for that. So we go through the clouds here. Got a lot of other people flying here. A lot of other air traffic. I, I, I see we have I like beans. He's he's flying today. And uh, over here on my left here we have Beefy Tube Eleven. That's good to uh, good to know. And uh, who else is that? Uh, uh, XX Daddy's home. Okay. Good. 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 We got some got some uh, some real real ace pilots here today. We can I can see. F 18s and Dark Stars and F 22s. People flying the F 18. F 22 must be a uh, a third party add on uh, airplane. Alright, we're on glide here, headed to the west. Santa Barbara below me under my right wing. There's just tons of lift here at cloud base. I need to share the uh, the link in the Discord. So I do have a Discord server. I don't think I want to just give that out publicly. I should set up like a public channel or something. Um, maybe we'll do that someday if somebody wants to uh, join in. Sorry, I'm flying all sporadic there because I'm trying to multitask and not doing a very good job of flying the straight line. Headed for Six Flags Magic Mountain here in uh, 52 nautical miles. As we're flying on the Santa Barbara Mountains, beautiful Santa Barbara below me under my right wing here. And took off from the airport to about 2,500 feet and we climbed up from there. We're now at 8,900 feet, which is pretty high <laughs> for thermal soaring this area. Maybe not the most realistic, but, uh, you know, we're, we're here to have fun, and uh, so it'll be fun. And now we can fly through these clouds here. Normally, you wouldn't want to do this. This would be pretty scary and uh, technically illegal. But we're in the simulator, so we can do whatever we want. Still climbing, which means I'm not flying nearly fast enough. I could be flying way faster. As we white out in this cloud here. Find the dis discus to see from I believe the developer got friends, which is in the uh, marketplace. This one has a um, a lot more features than the uh, built-in gliders that uh, Sobo Studios uh, made. And uh, so this one's kind of fun to fly. So I like, like this one. I don't really like the vario tones on this one as much, but um, that's okay. We'll just fly. Altitude 9,300 feet. And now I expect as we sort of leave this cloud, we'd have an extended period of no lift. So now I'm flying a bit fast. I'm gonna slow down a bit. I'll get some up trim. But we got a big old cloud straight ahead of me, so we'll head there. Actually, we want to kind of veer right towards that, uh, that target that says custom. That is the custom waypoint I set, which is Six Flags Magic Mountain. Yeah, I'm flying a bit fast. Slow her down here, slow her down. And sure enough, as soon as we sort of leave those clouds, now we have not rising air.
turn the vario. The sink tone off. Don't really need that. Altitude 9,000 feet. Probably can fly anywhere in Southern California in this airplane with this kind of altitude. And if we leave Santa Barbara. My colorful uh, paint scheme I selected here. Pretty fabulous. Oh, somebody in a B2. That's, uh, oh, goodbye. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. All right. And we're flying to the east here. I think I uh, earlier said I was flying to the west. That was an error. We're definitely flying east, west to east, across the northern part of Southern California. Going from Santa Barbara, California, and we're going to tag a few waypoints along our way to eventual goal of Palm Springs, which has got to be, I don't know, two or 300 miles. See if we get all the way there. See if I have this the uh, the uh, stamina to do that. <laughs> Yesterday I was gonna just do like an hour flight, but we ended up having a really good time and flew for like four hours. Oh, I went too slow. Um, yeah, that stream was a lot of fun. Check that out. Check out yesterday's stream if you're uh, on the channel here. Um, that was pretty cool. Got to join. Uh, had some friends join. Another guy joined in and flew with me, and then I had a friend join for a little bit, and and we all went and landed at the same airport. Very cool, though, with the, uh, the multiplayer aspect here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And now I'm flying too slow. A little bit more down trim. Should be flying about 65 knots. <coughs> Excuse me. Little bumps there. And as we approach this cloud here, I kind of expect to have some lift. And yeah, kind of some uh, some buoyant air under here. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of slow down. I have plenty of altitude. I don't really need to turn to climb more. So what I'll do is just fly slow in the lift. And so I'll get some kind of free altitude while still, you know, heading towards my goal. Call that sort of like porpoise flying, sort of doing this. Climbing really strong there. Which makes me want to turn, but no need. Let's just keep on going. I think that's uh, Ojai Lake or Lake Ojai or Ojai Reservoir there on my right. I think that's called. Maybe not. I know the town uh, near that is Ojai. And then as you exit the mountains there, that is uh, Ventura, California. Sort of go inside this cloud here. 42.63 nautical miles to Magic Mountain, the amusement park. Used to spend a lot of time there. It'll be cool to look at that from the air, see how that's rendered. I'm not sure I've flown by there yet or not in the sim. As we uh, go into the white room here, as they say, pretty much completely whited out. Normally, this would be a really bad place to be. <laughs> really dangerous to fly like this because you can become so easily disoriented. And the orientation here with the uh, all the uh, gamer tags actually makes it uh, pretty easy to tell the horizon. But yeah, the danger with being in a cloud like this is you have no reference to tell what's up or down. So that can be really, really scary. Don't want to be there. But we're in the simulator, so we can just do whatever we want. And as we'll, we exit... Oh, this flight instrument actually does have a... Uh, yeah, ha has an artificial horizon on it, too, so... 9,800 feet. 
got some more clouds to go through. And right now we just kind of want to speed up and uh, fly along best glider on 65. 65 knots. Head to our goal. Scott by Scott, he's on. Says I'm his favorite streamer. I hope uh, Scott uh, by Scott TV is. Uh, I hope he's following me. I think he was probably trying to hit me up to play some Apex Legends. Maybe we'll stream that later. I don't know. There's probably plenty of other streamers doing games like Apex. We need to get Scott in here. He's got the uh, he's got the VR, so we need to get Scott in the uh, in the uh, in the flight sim. That would be cool. Scott by Scott says yes. Oh, I'm not following him though. So how rude of me to. Uh, we need to get you to 100 followers so you can monetize this. I thought you only needed 50 followers for that. Scott by Scott is currently offline. I would like to monetize the stream. That would be fun. Um, you know, make a little extra cash, have a little extra incentive. But really, I think what's what's more is, um, you know, um, more fun is just having yesterday with uh, some people joining in here. And uh, yeah, Scott says maybe they updated it. I guess it was 100 followers back in the day for uh, to be a uh, to monetize the uh, the Twitch stream. Uh, Scott, it's uh, 50 followers to get. Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, not ambassador. It's uh, um, there's like two levels. There's like there's like two levels, and there's like the um, you know like the like the super pro level with the you get the verified check mark account. That's a partner. Yes, affiliate is what they call it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I know it's 50 because they send me an email after every time I finish the stream, and it's like, here's what you need to do to get affiliate status. <laughs> like, nope, don't have any of those. No, pretty close. I have the uh, one of the one of them is like a minimum amount of stream time, and got that easily yesterday with a four-hour stream. <laughs> and uh, and the other is having average number of viewers, so I need a lot more people viewing at the same time, and they get uh, a lot of followers. So, um, definitely would appreciate it. anybody who follows. Hopefully you find Soaring Flight interesting, and uh, you can come join me and we can fly together because uh, this is pretty cool. I, I enjoy this uh, quite a lot more than flying powered airplanes. What's the floppy thing doing on the nose? Yeah, so that's a, um, that's a little piece of string or a little piece of yarn that they put on something that the uh, uh, sailplane pilots do. That's a uh, relative air direction indicator. So basically, it's, uh, it tells you your yaw angle. So right now, it's kind of flopping straight back, which means uh, I'm flying straight into the air. But watch if I give it some rudder. And so now I'm crabbing. So now I'm flying through the air sideways like this, as, as indicated by that string. And in sailplanes, that's important to have... Uh, you know, I need a sailplane instructor. I had a sailplane instructor on yesterday explain that, uh, 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 join on here, and I, and I can't remember, um, yeah, really, really why that is. I, it, sailplanes can have a lot of uh, adverse yaw, and well, I, I don't know. It's, it's complicated. I'm, not, I'm definitely not uh, qualified to explain it. But uh, it can also be used as a tool. Um, uh, you might think, why would you want a crab like this where you give rudder and then opposite aileron and fly sideways? And this greatly increases drag because now the airplane's flying this way through the air instead of just straight through. And that can be used as a tool for uh, rapid descending. Uh, you may want drag if you need to get down or if you're a little bit high on approach. You can, you can crab as well as using the spoilers, which if you look here, there's a spoiler. You put those out. They do just like what they say. They spoil the lift and you come on down a lot more. So... Yeah, you get that little floppy thing out in front of you there just to look at. 
<coughs> yeah, Scott, this would be really awesome in VR. Like, you know, look around at these clouds out here and look at that. That looks really cool. This big old cloud right next to me. I could go fly in there if I wanted to, but we're flying to Magic Mountain. So, 33 nautical miles to get there. Cruising along here at 62 knots, altitude 10,100 feet, and uh, still climbing. Yep, we got some of this magic cloud street here, so probably going to be able to fly this whole task without ever turning in a thermal again, uh, which would be kind of boring. So, uh, I guess we'll see how the uh, see what happens. We might end up in some sink. We might end up getting out of these clouds and then not having the uh, the buoyant lift. Cruising along here. A lot of other people online flying right now. You can see off uh, in Southern California, pretty busy airspace in the sim today. Somebody flying an F-35 over there. Tomcat. I'm guessing that's an F-14 Tomcat. Altitude 10,000 feet, and yeah, we're pretty much just climbing, flying in a straight line which means I should be flying a lot faster. Ooh, it looks like uh, Cloud Hopper's online. I should have sent him a message. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, Tom Lowell might join me here. Um, oh, dang it, I, should, I took a... I closed it. I didn't save it. Uh, can I get that back? No, I didn't shoot. I took a, a screenshot of my flight, uh, my flight path. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Let me. Uh... No, I guess not. What the heck? That's weird. Okay, whatever. All right, I do have to pause it here though, and uh, and uh, take a break, get a uh, bathroom break, and a uh, beverage. I'll be right back. All right, he's back. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's back. Ah. It really likes to put you at like zero airspeed when you pause it. So then I come back in and then it's a, uh, <clears throat> a dive. Let's see, he's around here. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of dry throat here. Uh, dry weather in SoCal lately. 
a lot of bike riding this morning so oh yeah look at this so it's still at 10,000 feet uh, we were just smashing along here and uh, doing uh, no problem uh, gliding just had this pretty much endless lift here in this cloud street that we're flying through today we're flying from Santa Barbara California we're gonna try to basically go all the way across SoCal and land in the desert in Palm Springs because that'll be kind of cool and we'll sort of zigzag and try to tag some waypoints along the way first of which we're going through is uh, Magic Mountain and look at these very cool clouds we get to see here what a beautiful view dang how cool is that <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Might be a little too uh, jittery on moving the views around. I think that's kind of uh, distracting when you're watching the stream. But, uh, so sorry for that. Scott, I'm on Discord too if you want to join in here. We can have like a, we can have a discussion. I know that's, that's probably really exciting. Oh. Yeah, we'll come out of the cloud. Back in the clear air. Oh, Scott's working. That's the uh, second person who's been watching my stream uh, while working. And uh, so uh, I don't know what's up with you guys who are uh, watching Twitch streams while you're working. I, I've done the same thing. <laughs> AMSR background noise. I don't know what AMSR means. ASMR. Working on a Sunday. Guess when you're self employed, huh? All right, getting up to uh, 25 and a half nautical miles to our first turn point of Magic Mountain. Santa Barbara. This is a very realistic cross-country flight too. I definitely know people who have flown uh, flown that in a hang glider or a paraglider. But in a sailplane, it's kind of cheating, especially with this uh, cloud street, because we've climbed once and now we just fly in a straight line and still at 10,100 feet. Uh, just very buoyant uh, air here in the under these cloud streets as we head uh, to our first goal. Very cool sights here. And climbing more. Just got the very sounds turned off because we don't need it right now. And now we got kind of a big blue hole here. But then again, there's look at there's a big cloud right ahead of me, so should have no problem getting across to there. And then we'll be uh, be uh, pretty close to our first turn point. Sometimes I kind of accidentally kick the rudder pedals too, and so then as you see me sort of yaw a little bit.
Santa Paula down there, am I right? We're just getting some crazy buoyant air. You can really fly a lot faster. Scott says, don't forget to spam your Twitch link on all your aviation groups and forums. Uh, I don't know that we really have any of those anymore, Scott. Uh, <laughs> pretty much just Facebook, unfortunately. But I get a lot of viewers on uh, YouTube, because I have a lot of uh, subscribers there. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you don't mind, pop on over to Twitch and throw a uh, follow on the channel there as well that would help me out planning on doing a lot more uh, sailplane flying streaming here I think this is pretty cool especially if we get some other people in here we can do some cross-country flying together maybe even some racing and uh, there's a lot of really cool things we can do um, even if we can't set up official tasks in the uh, in the instrument with uh, turn point turn radiuses and things like that we can uh, we can just do a uh, just kind of a basic uh, navigation like in the uh, the, the built-in flight planner in uh, flight simulator here and and uh, really do a lot of really cool things right now I for now at least I'm kind of just focusing on flying in areas that I know just to kind of familiarize myself with the aircraft and what's possible and uh, but there's so many places around the world that I haven't flown and you know probably would never get the chance to fly we could simulate here, so it'd be a lot of fun. And or uh, you know, if you're watching and you want to just join in, yeah, feel free. My screen name designed by Dave. You should be able to find me online. I'm in the server West USA. Send me a friend request, but I think you should be able to find me anyways. Currently flying from Santa Barbara to Santa Clarita. California. Altitude is 9,600 feet as I go into this cloud and there's some lift in here. So I might climb a little bit. And that custom waypoint I have set up at 17.24 nautical miles is Six Flags Magic Mountain. Scott Clark wants to be a mod on YouTube. Uh, not sure I know how to do that. Make me a mod. Um, I definitely don't know how to do that. Oh, you can do like a poll and stuff. Really new to the live streaming, so uh, I need to get another uh, a, a monitor, Scott. I ordered a little uh, uh, one of those little portable 13-inch uh, monitors. USB-C, I'm going to put it uh, down here for my streaming uh, content because most of my desktop space right now is taken up by uh, by the uh, by the flight simulator uh, uh, window since I have it I have it spanning across all three monitors, but the stream's only showing the center monitor, so you guys aren't quite getting the full view that I have, but uh, I think if I if I stream the whole view, which I've done in the past, it uh, you just get the super uh, high aspect ratio image, which I th think makes it a little bit harder to watch. Uh, and uh, details like numbers and text on the screen becomes too small to read. So, especially with the uh, added compression of the stream. So, uh, yeah, there's that. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how to make somebody a mod on uh, YouTube. Uh, oh, that will be. Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> That'll make for a. Uh, a funky little uh, infinite window kind of thing. Uh, any player? No, not that. Yeah, there's kind of like a freaking. Um, Let's 
There's kind of a display error on YouTube on my screen right now. Um, yeah, you know what? Um, let me uh, I'm gonna pause this real quick and I grab my laptop. I could monitor the uh, stream on the laptop a little better. Uh, bear with me here one moment. It's kind of like a weird uh, sort of aspect ratio display kind of error screen rendering funkiness on YouTube uh, at the moment because I, I have it on a side display where I have a weird resolution set so weird aspect ratio all right and pause still working on kind of getting my streaming set up as you can see obviously I have a uh, a severe lack of RGB lighting uh, behind me here. I got I got something coming for that. Fortunately, we got Amazon, uh, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales, so uh, able to get some able to get some stuff here. All right. Uh, all right. Hopefully, it don't break stuff. Back into the clouds. That's cool. Oh, add moderator. Scott Clark is now a moderator for your channel. All right, Scott, make sure and uh, moderate that for me. Delete those spam messages. So far, none. Had a couple yesterday. Flying now, airspeed 68 knots, 67 knots. Flying through the clouds. We're flying the Discus 2C from Santa Barbara, California today. We're trying to go uh, to Palm Springs. That's cool, laptop just crash. What the, what the heck was that? <clears throat> Almost the Six Flags here. You got 10 nautical miles to go. 10.96. Cameron Evans says this is a great glider. His go-to. Yeah, camera's pretty cool. I don't like the sound of the uh, the tone of the Vario very much. I don't know if they have an option to change that. I think there's a lot of settings in this flight instrument I haven't played with. So uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's a possibility. That's kind of a nitpick thing, though. I mean, as long as it beeps when you go up, that's all that really matters, right? Sorry about that. Hit my knee. All right. Welcome uh, to the stream if you're just joining in. Today we are flying the Discus 2C, third party add on sailplane in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Doing a cross country flight today from started in Santa Barbara, California, and we're gonna try to fly all the way across Southern California to the east to the high desert, land in Palm Springs. And judging by the amount of buoyant air, this has just been uh, crazy. I climbed up to uh, initially, uh, uh, got off tow at 2,500 feet, climbed right up to cloud base about 9,000, got above cloud base, and now here I am in 10,700, and just been kind of porpoise flying. Uh, first turn point here is Six Flags Magic Mountain, uh, 7.7 .7 nautical miles. This is custom marker ahead of me. Gonna fly across to Santa Barbara, but, or sorry, to uh, uh, Palm Springs, and but uh, we're gonna try to sort of zigzag and hit different waypoints along the way, right? So 
Uh, the first one here is Six Flags Magic Mountain. Then I think we're going to go tag the Griffith Observatory. Then to Mount Wilson. Then Mount Baldy. Kind of hit the, uh, the highlights along the way here. Big puffy cloud coming right up here. We're going to fly into. This will be kind of cool. Very colorful sailplane. Most sailplanes just kind of have boring white paint. Cameron says, did you climb without the thermal mods? Is it possible without mods? Now with the update, yes, thermals are in the game, Cameron. Soaring is uh, a part of the game now. They completely over, well, I don't know if they completely overhauled the weather system, but um, thermals are here. And um, as far as I can tell, I think they're generally a fairly realistic, uh, 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 at least it feels pretty realistic. Uh, although now I'm clearly well above cloud base. Uh, which is uh, maybe not so realistic, although you can get you know sucked up into the clouds. But uh, also the clouds seem to be changing. There, the base. Uh, uh, you set the cloud base, and I'm pretty sure when you set that, you're setting the cloud base AGL, not MSL, which does kind of make sense because uh, in real life the clouds will uh, uh, will tend to rise with the terrain. So. Um, yeah, if you haven't installed the new update, Cameron, uh, make sure and do so. I think it's pretty cool. I, I, I never played with any soaring uh, uh, with any third-party mods or add-ons prior to the uh, the update. The update is the uh, 40th anniversary, basically the latest uh, free version that they that they released uh, just a couple weeks ago. Cameron says, I want to be at this height uh, with hang gliding. Go for the season. Yeah, 10,900 feet. Yeah, that's a, that's a good height. Um, I don't know if you could do that around here at Santa Clarita, which is maybe not too realistic. That would be some pretty exceptional weather. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've been, uh, my highest I've been in a hang glider has been about uh, 14,000 feet. So that was up in the Owens Valley, of course. Which is where I was flying yesterday in uh, in uh, the flight sim in the stream. So check out yesterday's stream. That was a lot of fun. I had some people join in. And uh, uh, Cameron says easy to do down under in Australia. Yeah, there's some there's some pretty booming sites down there for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, their guys' uh, season is probably just turning on there um, down in Australia. So that's cool. Yeah, we'll do some uh, simulated flights. It'd be cool to like check the live forecast, you know, the real world forecast, and then try to fly in like live weather. Um, although now that I think about that in Australia, you know, that would be like flying it, you know, like overnight here. So I'm usually in bed, so maybe I won't be doing that. Getting up to uh, Six Flags there. Oh, there you can see it below me, the amusement park. I'm not gonna. I don't think you're gonna be able to really see much detail up here, especially if I'm in these clouds I don't really want to give up this altitude uh, you know this isn't a uh, sightseeing flight exactly but um, let's see what we can yeah I can't really see here I'm right over the top of it so I can't really see very well but uh, yeah that's the park down there oh I can I can zoom in I forgot yeah uh, yeah, maybe it'll be fun to get the helicopter out and uh, kind of fly around there and see how much detail there is. But uh, yeah, that's Six Flags Magic Mountain. Some very fun roller coasters there. Spent a lot of time there with some friends. Scott will remember those days. Used to get the season pass. All right, made to our first uh, first first goal, first turn point. Now we're gonna make a little bit of a right hand turn. And then we got uh, 24 nautical miles to the Griffith Observatory. Definitely going to bust some uh, airspace here. I think LAX uh, Class B airspace, Class Bravo, I think as they say. I'm going to fly through some more clouds. Altitude 10,600 feet. Yeah, I haven't lost any altitude <laughs> uh, since uh, basically in that glide from Santa Barbara to Santa Clarita. That was like 60 nautical mile glide. 
uh, just boring air flying in through all these clouds. So this might be kind of a trivially easy uh, cross-country flight. Um, <laughs> but I'm kind of uh, kind of still sort of figuring out, you know, how to set the how to set the weather, how to set the clouds for certain days. And you want good lift because that's that's what makes it fun. But uh, it'll be kind of neat to experiment, find some kind of challenging conditions too, you know. And so, and having clouds, you know, it's just. I mean, clouds are cool. Look at this. We get to look through here and fly through these fluffy clouds. Normally in real life you would not want to do this. <laughs> but we're in the simulator so we can do whatever the heck we want. And yeah, so you can see the cloud base uh, dropping down here as the terrain drops down. Cameron says, am I playing this on the PC or the console? I am on a PC, Cameron. And uh, I have the specs for my rig posted on, uh, on my Twitch channel. So if you go over to Twitch, uh, Design by Dave, I got the PC on there. Basically, it's a 30, uh, RTX 3080, and uh, uh, which does a pretty good job with the uh, with the latest update. Uh, obviously, uh, well, I don't know how well you can see in the stream, but I'm getting pretty pretty smooth frame rate. I'm not sure if I can get that to show up. Oh yeah, here we go. The NVIDIA overlay. Let's see if this will work. This has like been not working. So yeah, it's just showing NA. Yeah, I don't know what's up with with that. I'll just turn that off. Yeah, just cruising along here, doing great. Ten thousand feet. Cameron says, "Nice. I'll be upgrading to either the 3080 or the 4080. Yeah, either one. Either one will be great. The 4080 is definitely a uh, a step up from the 3080. Um, uh, quite a lot, a lot more money. 3080 is now. I think you can get for seven, eight hundred dollars. 4080 in the retail on those are 1,200. But the you know the third party cards are even more, 13, 1,400 or more. I think I've seen some are like they're like." 1600 which is crazy because that's the msrp on the founders edition 4090 so um yeah if you were asking me for advice as to which one which you didn't so i'll go ahead and give you my unsolicited advice anyways <laughs> uh whether you go 3080 or 4080 depends on the resolution you're running uh if you are um if you're running 4k uh 4k then uh yeah maybe the 4080 3080 is kind of you know, kind of, kind of scratches the uh, yeah, kind of borderline, maybe a 4K. Uh, I have a uh, f uh, 3440 by 1440 uh, main display, so not quite 4K. But then I, I have I'm running in windowed mode and then stretched across uh, two other side panels. So the total number of pixels I'm running actually is probably pretty close to 4K. So, um, but I get a pretty smooth, uh, pretty smooth uh, uh, result here. So pretty, pretty smooth experience. Um, little bit of uh, stuttering, uh, especially when turning rapidly like this uh, from time to time. But for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty much enjoying it here. A lot of traffic, air traffic around here uh, today in SoCal. Oh, somebody's, oh, somebody in the Dark Star there is having a bad time. <laughs> uh... <laughs> he says, uh, Cameron says, overall I need it for, uh, I need the graphics card uh, for business, for video editing, but also, you know, gaming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think, um, I mean, check the reviews, you know, I don't I don't think there's a whole lot of uh, performance difference uh, when it comes to uh, video editing. I think uh, as long as you just have a decent graphics card. I know the 40 series definitely in other productivity apps, uh, things like uh, like Blender rendering and uh, 3D graphic rendering, stuff like that, um, animation, uh, they, they definitely have a big step up, but uh, yeah, I think there's not that much performance difference. Oh, 
All right, getting pretty close to uh, Griffith Observatory here now, 15 nautical miles. I think I might just kind of dive down below Cloud Base here. And kind of start to make this a challenge, maybe. So far, no problem. Took off from Santa Barbara at uh, 2,500 feet. Climbed in a nice thermal right up to uh, Cloud Base, about 9,000, and uh, then got up through the Cloud Base. And now we're above the clouds as the uh, terrain gets lower, so does the clouds. And you can see we're headed right for downtown LA. Normally, I think you would never really go here on a sailplane. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we can. This is fun. Should have a... Uh, yeah, that's Kegel Mountain right here. Uh, Silmar Hang Gliding Association is right over here. Let me uh, move the camera. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this right here is Kegel. We've flown there a couple of times. That's a very cool place to fly. And, um, you know, I bet they're... Uh, let me get the um, external view. I bet their landing area is uh, is rendered pretty nicely. It's uh, yeah, it's right over here. You can see the glass strip. We could probably land the sailplane there. Actually, there's kind of a lot, enough room. But yeah, that's the Silmar Hang Gliding Association's uh, uh, landing area right under, right under my left wing here, that grassy area. So I've landed there, flown these mountains before. But that's not where we're going today. Cameron says, are these real people flying around? Those are real people, Cameron. Those are um, the uh, their, uh, gamer tags are what is shown in the, uh, the gray box. And then on the bottom left of that is the aircraft they're flying and then their altitude. So somebody in the uh, VF-35 is climbing like crazy. Cheeky clapper number 261, yes. Sorry, cheek clapper. And uh, I got somebody flying the DC-3 down there. You can see his lights. Somebody in F-22. So yeah, these are all people just flying, enjoying Southern California. Yesterday's stream, I had somebody join me, and I'm just cruising along, flying in the Owens Valley in the sailplane, and all of a sudden I start to hear a jet engine roaring. Behind me, I got the headphones on, so it really sounded like it was behind me. And then he goes, <laughs> in the F-18. So... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> cheat clapper, LOL. <laughs> uh, Twitch name, Designed by Dave. Uh, yep. Should be able to find me on there. Damn, cheat clapper is just getting after it here. Uh, in the F-35, I, he might be in slew mode. Thank you, Scott, for posting the link. Scott is a moderator. On YouTube. That's cool. Good idea. Thank you, Scott. Can't you do that, Scott, since you're a moderator? I'm going to have to slow down here for a second. Uh, uh, pin message. Here we go. Message pinned. Mods can't pin. Lame. Yeah. Why can't mods do everything? Like, isn't that the point of mods? So that the, uh, you know, the important, the talent, you know, can just focus on being talented and then they do all the other work, like dealing with spam and... I don't know. I guess that's a question for YouTube developers. Look at that downtown LA right, right straight ahead of me. We're not going to go there. We're going to head to the Griffith, Griffith Observatory. They make a left-hand turn and head back into the mountains. We're doing a sort of a zigzag cross-country path today, flying from 
Santa Barbara, California to Palm Springs. Somebody uh, measure that for me on uh, on Google Maps and let me know how far that is. 300 miles or something? 200 miles? I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I took off from Palm Springs and uh, climbed immediately in the thermal to uh, right up to cloud base. And then I've just been basically flying straight and level ever since. We're in cloud base. We're getting porpoise flying and through some buoyant lift. But now as we come out over the city, um, the terrain drops down and so does the cloud base. And now my altitude is finally dropping below 10,000. I'm at 9,000 feet. But uh, we could definitely fly a lot faster than I've been flying. Kind of not used to that in a sailplane. These things can just go, go, go. And uh, so, especially with the kind of lift we have today. Flying over, flying towards the Griffith Observatory, Hollywood, North LA. Look at that beautiful day. Santa Monica Mountains under my right wing over there. Four point three nautical miles to my next turn point. Give you a little external view. Pretty sure that is the 134 freeway underneath me there. Runs east-west through uh, through so northern and southern California. Yeah, there it is. Takes you out to, uh, yeah, coming over uh, Bob Hope Internet, uh, Airport. Simi Valley, I think that uh, that is over here. Wow, look at that. Looks so cool. And uh, definitely losing some altitude coming out here at 8,500 feet. But we got some uh, got some clouds here. So, and there's a cheat clapper in the F-35. Uh, he is moving down there. <laughs> That's my buddy, uh, good buddy, Cheek Clapper. Yes, the legendary aviator, Cheek Clapper. Uh, there he is, there he is there, find the F-35. And, uh, yeah, I have our Griffith Park here now. The Griffith Observatory is one of the uh, sort of handcrafted uh, 3D models. Would be, zip, would be very cool to go do a flyby there and kind of buzz it, but uh, we need the altitude because we're doing a cross-country soaring flight here. You'll just have to enjoy the view from the air as we fly over it. coming into some clouds here too so we might lose the view here <coughs> if you're just joining in checking out the stream thanks a lot uh, give me a follow on twitch if you would I've uh, been uh, playing around with the streaming a lot the uh, last couple days, really enjoying it, having a lot of fun with these sailplane flights. There's a lot of really cool stuff we can do in Microsoft Flight Simulator with uh, gliders and uh, uh, soaring flights. And, uh, you know, with multiplayer, we can do some racing. We can do flight uh, cross-country tasks like I'm doing right now. And it would be cool to have a little sort of community, have more people around to fly with. Uh, a lot of really cool fun. And I kind of share some of my soaring experience with you guys. And so uh, it would be very cool to uh, to have you join in, join the channel, support the channel, kind of work on this, turn it into a thing, you know. All right, so we just hit the uh, Griffith Observatory. And now we take a left turn towards the custom spot I have. This is Mount Wilson that we're headed towards, 13 nautical miles. As we head through these clouds, and there's a lot of lift in these clouds, I can just kind of slow down and climb a little bit. Try to keep the wings level as I white out here. 
Cameron said, would love to do some proximity glider flights uh, with you in the Alps. Yeah, Cameron, let's join in in the Alps. It uh, would be super cool. I've never been there, but I'm sure these soaring flying, uh, well, in real life and in the simulator is going to be awesome there. So that will be really, really cool. Um, yeah, I was flying with Tom Lowe yesterday uh, over the Owens Valley and flew with him. Uh, another, I got another string with him. We were flying in uh, over King Mountain um, in uh, northern Idaho. That was a lot of fun. So we could definitely do that, and um, you can see I'm flying a task here, and it's not quite a real, uh, real soaring task. I don't have like turn uh, cylinders and the type of soaring navigation that you would have, but just using the flight planner, the built-in flight pl planner in uh, Flight Simulator uh, in the main menu flight uh, planner. Um, yeah, you can see I'm going from one waypoint to another. Uh, the altitude marker is not accurate. Uh, ignore that. I don't know if you can change that when you set up the flight plan. You might be able to. I'll have to play with it a little bit more. But, um, yeah, that's what we're doing here right now. And so far, this has been, uh, yeah, the uh, the amount of uh, just buoyant air I'm getting flying up at here at cloud base. I haven't had to do any more thermaling under the, other than that one climb, which is... Uh, kind of making this too easy so um, I'm kind of you know still figuring out uh, uh, you know what the best weather settings are for uh, for these tasks also, I'm used to the uh, you know the performance of a hang glider not a sailplane and these things could just go for miles and miles and miles you know I mean, we're talking like a factor of like four or five uh, times more performance more glide performance in the sailplane than in the uh, than in a hang glider, so yeah, the whole uh, the whole world feels uh, quite a bit smaller when you can fly uh, when you can fly 75 knots and uh, and get a 40 or 50 to one glide ratio. <laughs> What's your HG flying uh, these days? I'm kind of uh, I would say uh, semi-retired from flying hang gliders these days, Cameron. I haven't flown in a couple years. Uh, uh, previous to that, and if I was flying today, for sure the best, my favorite glider was the was the Wheelswing Sport Three. So, um, sort of intermediate performance gliders. And we're going on glide here to Mount Wilson as we are leaving the Griffith Observatory. Pasadena down on my right there and we should be able to see the Rose Bowl I think from here oh maybe not quite yet yeah we're not quite uh, oh no there it is right below me yep there's the Rose Bowl just some more uh, more famous landmarks for you right underneath the airplane there's a Rose Bowl Pasadena very cool and uh, headed to uh, Mount Wilson. Mount Wilson, there's uh, famous observatories up there. 100 inch telescope that uh, Hubble used to make uh, discoveries about our universe and the galaxies. He's the one that discovered that the universe was expanding. Unfortunately, I think the simulator doesn't uh, render the observatories up. I think it just renders them as generic buildings. They so don't have uh, some custom landmarks that could be improved on. And I'm going to start flying a lot faster here. Because it would be nice to do some thermaling here, too. And with these clouds, we should still be able to have no problem getting back up. If you want to see the weather settings, I've got, uh, well, I could show you them, actually. But also, at the beginning of the stream, I show you the weather and the uh, and the flight track that we're going to do, the uh, flight plan. And this is, you know, a pretty booming day in SoCal. Not entirely unrealistic. Um, 
the only thing that's kind of a, um, uh, that stands out as being unrealistic is that in SoCal, if we had clouds like this, they would be uh, on a day like this, they would pretty much be uh, concentrated over the mountains alone. Out over the valley, you wouldn't have this sort of continuous uh, clouds like that. That's that's, that's uh, pretty unrealistic for a soaring day here in, in SoCal. Um, so, uh, but uh, but the altitudes that we're getting is uh, not necessarily that unrealistic, uh, but pretty booming. So I think uh, for more realistic, I would lower that cloud base down a bit and maybe reduce the total number of clouds. All right, Mount Wilson. Also, there's a uh, concentration of communications uh, uh, radio towers up there and stuff, which uh, it doesn't look like they render those in the game either. No, they do not. That's kind of disappointing. Yeah, there should be a whole bunch of kind of a SoCal landmark because you can see those from miles and miles around. Big tall, uh, big tall, uh, you know, radio towers and stuff. And that's one. That's the observatory right there. It was just kind of a generic round building. And then this right here. Obviously, there's not like a 10-story office building up here. So that's kind of disappointing. Hopefully, they can get some handcrafted landmarks there to improve that. So. Uh, okay, now we do need to do some thermaling because my next waypoint is a uh, higher altitude than uh, than where I am. And luckily, I'm in some lift, so that should be uh, turn my vario back on down to 8,200 feet. And uh, my next waypoint is Mount Baldy, which is the tallest peak in the San Gabriel Mountains, which is where we're flying over currently. And uh, so, if I want to get up to Mount Cross Mount Baldy, that's at 10,000 feet. So I'm going to need to uh, do some climbing here. Luckily, we have some lift. I think I kind of just flew through uh, the middle of it. So we can thermal over Mount Wilson here. That'll be pretty cool. Cameron says, I needed to deep dive into tasks with the sailplanes. No idea how to do that at all yet. Well, it would be the same as with a hang glider, uh, Cameron, if you've uh, set that up in your, your hang gliding instrument, except for just, you know, figuring out how to actually set that up in the instrument, and if they have that actually, you know, supported in the uh, simulation, so, um, yeah, it's something I haven't been able to play with yet. So we're climbing pretty good here, just found this thermal, and we're going up at uh, 700 feet per minute average to 8,800 feet. Losing it a little bit there. I'm going to tighten up this circle. <coughs> and here I thermal right up into the white room. Altitude 9,000 feet. Oh, yeah, that's not high enough to get to Mount Baldy. We're going to just try to have to head that direction. Oh, it looks like it's in the clouds. Yeah, shoot, we might not be able to get there. We're going to have to go fly right out in front of it. Now we're getting some sink, a little bit more varied conditions in the air here. Looks like it might. Uh, looks like it might be in the clouds right there. Maybe not. Maybe we'll get a space in between it. But yeah, whether whether or not we can get high enough to fly over the top of it. So if you were doing a proper cross country task, you know, a, a waypoint like that, you wouldn't have. You would have a, uh, you know, a cylinder around the actual waypoint. So you wouldn't have to fly directly over it. You would have to just touch the edge of that cylinder and for something that's kind of high like that you might set that turn cylinder to something pretty large so in order to tag that waypoint you wouldn't have to actually be 
uh, at 10,000 feet. You could be pretty low and out in front of it. Now we're under a cloud and we're not getting buoyant air. Whoop, just as I said that, it starts to go back up again. <coughs> That's kind of punchy and varied here. If they're flying along a really long time and really consistent lift and buoyant air, now it's changing. Which is very cool because that's the way uh, that's the way the atmosphere works and that's the way soaring works. Oftentimes you find it to be great in one area and not so great in another. Down to 8,500 feet and uh, trying to find some lift here because I want to climb. I could get back to. 11, 11 12,000 like I was, I'd be able to fly over Baldy. I can see Baldy now. And it's right there. It's not in the clouds. But we gotta do some climbing to get up there. We'll just kind of search in these clouds as we get closer. Find a little bit. Super light. Oh, now back down. It's definitely slowly sinking here, down to 8,300 feet. Just kind of got to be patient, patient, and uh, keep searching under here. We'll connect with something. I'll just kind of fly. Uh, like an S pattern back and forth along this range here. These are the San Gabriel Mountains. As you try to find uh, find some lift. And right now, I see some landmarks we're coming up. Coming up right up on Highway 39, which uh, I rode my bike up yesterday. That goes up to Crystal Lake. I'll kind of point that out as we come around here. can see the road there. doing too good here yeah so this is Azusa Canyon here you can see the uh, the homes and the road goes up this way I'm just kind of flying around here trying to find uh, find a climb, see if we can get back up a bit higher. Down to 7,900 feet. We're, uh, first couple of legs of this flight was uh, just trivially easy. We are just flying along in buoyant air and just climbing as we were going. Well over 10,000 feet most of the time. And now we're, uh, we're right up underneath cloud base here, which is about as high as you can you know, realistically expect to get on uh, on typical days, but uh, I was getting high earlier. I was able to get right up into the clouds and get some climbs, so uh, but not finding it here. So I'm going to keep pressing on to the east. My eventual goal is to get to Palm Springs. Maybe another 100 miles to go or so. There's not nearly that much water in the uh, reservoir down there now. Oh, 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 oh. We just hit, hit a little something real strong there. 
Ooh, can we climb here? That sounded pretty good. Wasn't very big, but... Nope. Yeah, I got suckered into it. I knew that wasn't going to be big enough to really uh, circle in. It ended up costing me some altitude. Yep, there it is. So you need to head out this way a little bit more. Maybe, maybe. Ooh. It's punchy. It's there, but it's small and it's inconsistent. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging to work, which is okay. We can use a challenge. It's up and down. It's up and down. So we're going to try and turn tighter to get into it. Get into the core. And I sort of flatten out as I head around into the, uh, into the upwind side. And then try to tighten it up now. We're going up 7,800 feet. Ooh, got really slow there. Ooh, really slow. Okay, that one's not really working for me. I think I want to try flying straight ahead here. You can see the base on this cloud here is much higher. So if I can climb up into this cloud straight ahead of me, sort of double cloud, then um, maybe that will uh, get me high enough. Okay, that sounds pretty good at. Well, it's small. It's just getting these little punchy bullet thermals, we call them. Ooh. All right. Kind of looking for an area that's big enough we can make a full circle in. I think we should be able to find it up under here. Plenty of altitude to play with. Flying over these San Gabriel Mountains here in Southern California. Trying to find some, trying to connect with a climb. Get up to uh, go tag Mount Baldy. He took off about an hour and a half ago from Santa Barbara, California. Immediately connected with a very smooth, light but very smooth and consistent climb all the way up the cloud base at about 9,000 feet. And then just kind of porpoise flew in the along the cloud streets. Eventually got up to like ten or eleven thousand. As we flew to Santa Clarita and Six Flags Magic Mountain, and then from there we uh, turned right a little bit and headed toward downtown LA and tagged the Griffith Observatory. And then we flew back to the mountains, back into the San Gabriel Mountains to tag. Uh, Mount Wilson and now we're headed down range over Azusa Canyon right underneath my wing there and uh, trying to tag uh, Mount Baldy but I need to climb to do that now I'm down up to uh, 8,000 feet but I am climbing and Mount Baldy's at uh, 10,000 so I would like to have uh, you know be able to get to 11 or 12,000 or so to have a little bit of a little bit of room to be able to fly right over the top of it but I don't really need to fly right over the top of it. I could fly out in front of it. Mount Baldy is the tallest peak in the San Gabriel. At, uh, it's like exactly at 10,000 feet. Like 10,006 feet or something like that. I 
And this climb is going up. It's not very consistent, but I am climbing, averaging about 300, 400 feet per minute. Altitude 8,300 feet. So, yeah, we're getting up here. It's not the, uh, not the best climb I've ever had, but it is climbing, which is what we need. Eight thousand five hundred feet, doing pretty good. Flying over the San Gabriel Mountains in Southern California, 8,700 feet. Circling up right over Azusa Canyon, which is an area I know very well. I was just there yesterday. Riding up this road, you can see here on my bicycle, that, that snakes its way up the mountain. That's Highway 39. It's one of my go-to mountain roads for training because it's one of the few roads that we have where you can ride for over an hour without stopping. And there's a great uh, public park where you can park your car at. And there's restrooms. It's a real popular uh, place to start for, uh, for cyclists. I can tell you there is not nearly that much water in the reservoir right now. Very, very dry here in California these last few years. If you're just joining me on Twitch, you would appreciate it if you give me a follow. Planning on doing a lot more uh, sailplane flights. There's a lot of really cool things we can do with gliders in Microsoft Flight Simulator now. Uh, we could organize some um, cross country task flights like I'm doing today, some racing. Uh, with the multiplayer aspect and with the streaming, I think we could have a lot of fun, some really cool stuff, really unique uh, flying, and it would be fun to share that with uh, with more of you guys and have you share the uh, virtual skies with me. Pretty fun. Yesterday I was flying along and had uh, this guy Sam join in, check out yesterday's stream, and uh, we flew together in the Owens Valley for a bit, and then he changed to the F-18 and buzzed me. But that was super cool because I didn't know he was doing that. And all of a sudden, I just heard, started to hear the engine, you know, rumbling. And then he, there he just, you know, flew right through my field of view. That was very, very awesome. And uh, then my buddy Tom Lowe joined in, and we circled a little bit together and flew through uh, Yosemite National Park through the valley. And then all three of us went down and landed together at uh, this airport. As we climb to, we're in, coming, coming up through 9,000 feet now. Getting right up into the base of this cloud. Not the best climb ever, but it's getting me up. And I'm drifting in the direction that I need to go. I've got about a 13 mile per hour wind out of the southwest. West Southwest right now. Trying to go tag Mount Baldy, which is 10,000 feet, so I'm going to need to climb a bit more if I want to fly right over the top of it. May not be able to do that. That'll be okay. I can just kind of fly out in front of it. Take a look. Real name of that is uh, mountain is Mount San Antonio. Um, but the nickname is Mount Baldy because... It's like the one big bald peak that kind of stands out in the uh, San Gabriels here. It's the tallest peak in the San Gabriels. At, uh, I think it's 10,006 feet. As I'm climbing through 9,300 feet. 9,400.
Not the best uh, climb ever, but it's still going up, so. And we're starting to get into the white room. We're on the edge of this cloud. You can see the cloud base uh, varies with the terrain, so it rises over the mountains, which is pretty realistic in real life. It's, that's also what we see. Although I think it's, the effect is somewhat exaggerated here in the simulator. Still climbing here. Nope, not there. 9,600 feet. All right, I think that's probably the, that's probably it. So now I'm gonna head right back, uh, turn and head towards the uh, towards my waypoint here, where it says custom 12 nautical miles. Probably get some. Uh, just some buoyant lift as I fly through the cloud here. Yep, sure enough. If you're new to soaring flight, you're just checking out uh, flight simulator streams. Um, uh, this is a really, really, really cool way to fly. Uh, to me, it's way more interesting than flying with an engine. Um, you have to be able to learn to find and work the natural lift in the uh, environment around you. Um, it's kind of akin to uh, surfing and very cool way to fly I'm super stoked that it's here in flight simulator this makes it so much more fun to me I was flying around with you know powered airplanes and stuff and um, I kind of got bored of that right away <laughs> and luckily they released this update and um, uh, the, the new update here a couple weeks ago and now I'm super into it so uh, sharing that with you guys Flying through the clouds here, headed towards Mount Baldy. And looks like we've got a taller cloud base up ahead as the terrain rises. So as long as we can climb in this next cloud uh, set of clouds ahead of me, we should be able to fly right over top. That's ba Mount Baldy, right underneath, right above my nose. There looks like there's a little bit of snow up there. And uh, yeah, I see these clouds here are even higher. So yeah, if you're if you're setting up the weather, you set the uh, the base of the clouds, the cloud base, and the cloud to and the tops of the clouds. Uh, you set those heights, and that cloud base is in um, AGL above above ground level altitude, not mean sea level altitude. So. Um, so that's why the clouds are rising with the terrain, and that's uh, that's generally realistic. That we, we generally see that um, for these types of clouds, at least uh, on a soaring day. Scott says, "When are they adding hang gliders?" Well, it's interesting, Scott. I I'm gonna assume never because they're not gonna know how to do it right unless they know how to fly hang gliders. The challenging thing with hang gliders is that they are controlled by weight shift, so the flight dynamics are quite a bit different than uh, to figure out. Uh, but my guy Tom Lowe that I was flying with yesterday, he actually uh, single-handedly developed a flight simulator for hang gliders doing weight shift. Um, but it's only in VR. And I don't have the VR headset, so I haven't been able to mess around with it yet. But we were talking yesterday about the possibility of integrating it uh, into uh, those flight models into, uh, into Microsoft Flight Simulator. So it might be doable. Um, it's definitely not something that I would have any level of expertise to know what the hell I would be doing. Um, I mean, other than you know flying the hang glider. So I guess maybe I could contribute to the development in that sense. I thought I had some good lift there, and uh, and I lost it. So I think I'm just not quite uh, to the cloud enough. As I come up underneath here. That's feeling pretty good. K 
Cameron says, can't wait for the VR release. It'll be good for coaching new students. If you're talking about the VR release for um, uh, hang gliders, uh, Tom Lowe has uh, released that. Uh, I think it's called Free Flight Experience. I think if you Google that, I think he has a website for it. Or you can reach out to him on Facebook, um, Tom Lowe. If you don't know Tom Lowe, just search, search him up. But I think if you Google Free Flight Experience, you'll find his website. So you can check it out. And you can look him up on YouTube, too. He's got videos of it, uh, you know, of the flying. And it has thermals and ridge lift simulation. And um, good graphics. He's using an Unreal Engine um, to uh, generate the graphics. And we're climbing up here. Here we are, 10,000 feet. Pretty good. I think we're going to be able to get to our goal. Or our waypoint, rather. And we can certainly get there. I'm just, I just want to be able to fly over the top of it. And uh, yeah, you can see there's not a whole lot of room between the cloud base and the top of the mountain over there. But that's okay. We can uh, we can kind of skirt right under the cloud and right over the top of the mountain. That's the town of uh, Claremont and Upland uh, just to the south. And Azusa Canyon right on my right here where you see the water. Climbing good now. Eight, uh, 10,300 feet. Consistent climb. Not super strong, but we are going up. It's kind of what we've been flying, uh, finding here today is, yeah, got 300, three, 400 feet per minute average on the on the climbs, which is not super strong, but it is, um, uh, it's enough and uh, it's been consistent. So as we're starting to get right up into cloud base, see how much more up we can get here. So one thing I'm finding with the thermals and the clouds in the sim here is they seem to kind of take you up on the edge of the cloud. And uh, in general, that's kind of not what we find in real life. In real life, I think it, you'll tend to find it more right underneath the middle of the cloud. You can see I'm, I'm kind of circling right on the, on the front edge of this cloud here and rather than being right underneath it. So yeah, see? So that's kind of interesting. All right, I'm still going up 10,800 feet. Circling up over the San Gabriel Mountains in Southern California. Mountain span runs east west and pretty much separates the Southern California basin from the high desert, which you can see is just coming around now there in front of my nose. Altitude 11,000 feet as I'm going to disappear into this cloud. Although maybe not. I think I'm still kind of turning right on the leading edge of it. I may kind of have to go around the clouds here to uh, to see Mount Baldy. I don't know if I want to get uh, get too much uh, uh, into the clouds here because I don't want to impact the terrain where I can't see it. Altitude 11,300 feet. All right, I'm gonna just fly around this cloud here now. Get a little bit of airspeed. And it looks like I can, I can kinda, just kinda maybe dip my right wing in the cloud. I'm still kinda climb as I'm coming around it here. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm 
All right, altitude 11,300 feet. Trying to fly by or right over Mount Baldy, but now I'm kind of uh, I've got the uh, cloud here, so <laughs> this is kind of uh, interesting. I mean, I should have enough altitude to be over the top of it, but um, not if I get a whole lot lower. And you can't necessarily count on the altimeter to be 100% accurate because it's based on the, you know, air pressure. And my indicator just said it was off to my left a little bit here, so. This is uh, maybe kind of sketchy, the way we're flying right here. Normally, you would not want to do this. I'm going to take a left turn here and see if I can get out of this cloud. And come around, maybe I can come around behind it. There it is, straight in front of me. That's Mount Baldy for sure. Yeah, so we'll fly right right over the top. And this is cool. We'll get a, we'll get a nice look down at it. Altitude 11,300 feet. Been flying for almost two hours now. Coming up on Mount Baldy here, the tallest peak in the San Gabriel Mountains. Quite a bit far back in here. And from here I could go over the back and go land in the uh, desert if I wanted to, but I don't. We want to keep uh, heading on down east. The idea here is to basically cross all of Southern California for the north northern sort of border of Southern California and land in Palm Springs. So I think the sim here is rendering uh, way too many trees uh, for this to be uh, Mount Baldy. The reason it's called Mount Baldy is because, well, it's bald. There's no it's no trees up there. It's just a big, big pile of granite. So, yeah, I don't. There shouldn't be any of the shrubbery here. That's kind of not uh, not that accurate. <laughs> tried to fly here the other day and uh, yeah I ran into a whole bunch of sink I got on the lee side of the uh, uh, of the mountains lee side of the wind and uh, I sunk out and had to uh, had to turn the head back got some lift here so maybe I'll do some turns be nice to climb a little more so I make sure I have plenty of terrain clearance to glide out of here. As we head, uh, we'll cross from the San Gabriel Mountains across the Cajon Pass to the San Bernardino Mountains. And Mount Baldy right on my right here as I come around in this light thermal. It's kind of a cloud forming right here on my left. That's a pretty strong lift. Climbing through 11,500 feet now, doing pretty good.
Got a little slow there, got distracted. Bailing on this. I'm just gonna head to my next wave, head towards my next waypoint, which I'm pretty sure is San Gregorio. There is a good view of Mount Baldy right below me there. Isn't that cool? Yeah, there shouldn't be like any of these trees down here. All right, and with that, I'm gonna take a uh, two-minute break here and and uh, re-up on my beverage and use the rest, and I'll be right back. Oh, whoops, uh, I forgot that I didn't actually click the pause there. Was that climbing that whole time? <laughs> wow. Autothermal. Oh, whoops, a daisy. I gotta put some socks on. My toesies are getting cold. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. All right, so we are here. Liquid exchange break. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I did have to exchange liquids. As they say, you don't buy a beer, you just rent it. Yeah, so, all right, cruising along here. If you're just joining the stream, a little summary of what's going on. Flight time is about two hours. We took off in Santa Barbara, California, climbed up right up to Cloud Base in a nice smooth thermal to about uh, 8, 000, eight or 9,000 feet. And then from there, we've been able to sort of climb through the clouds and uh, went on a nice long glide to uh, Santa Clarita, where we tagged... Uh, Magic Mountain, Six Flags Magic Mountain Amusement Park. Used to spend a lot of time there, a lot of fun, a lot of great roller coasters there. Then we made a little bit of a right turn and headed to the southeast and uh, flew out towards uh, downtown LA and tagged the Griffith Observatory. Then made a, about a 90 degree left hand turn and flew back to, back to the uh, San Gabriel Mountain Range and uh, tagged Mount Wilson 
And that was all kind of just one extended glide and kind of porpoise flying and lift through the clouds. And um, then we got a little bit low and had to uh, had to get back up, had to do some climbing to get up to our next turn point, which we're just leaving now, which was Mount Baldy. Back uh, behind me there. You can kind of just see this slide back here. That's, that's going to be Mount Baldy back there. Mount Baldy is the uh, uh, tallest peak in the San Gabriel Mountains. And, uh, man, I have this, like lumbar support thing in the in the chair and it's like it's kind of doing the opposite of lumbar support it's kind of doing like lumbar chafing it's not like this thing sucks. this chair sucks i need a new chair follow the stream do me a favor follow the stream you know like subscribe uh, on youtube and stuff so i can monetize the channel so i can afford to buy a new freaking chair <laughs> and we'll be doing a lot more flying Anyway, so we hit Mount Baldy, and then we're headed, uh, now we're going to head uh, to the east some more. The goal is to eventually get to Palm Springs. And right now we have, we're coming up on the Cajon Pass, and that's the 15 freeway, that's the way to Vegas. So uh, that'll be a cool flight I want to do someday, is fly from, basically from here, from, from uh, San Bernardino to Las Vegas. Uh, we'll do that one of these days. Maybe the next one. Maybe the next stream. Tune in. I'll try to figure out a schedule. I think for sure uh, Wednesday I'll be on Wednesdays and then like Saturday, Sunday. Um, and so we'll be doing some more soaring flying. And it'll be cool to have you guys uh, follow the channel and uh, maybe jump in the game here and, uh, and fly with me. We can definitely soar together. Um, I can, uh, uh, my screen name, uh, Designed by Dave, you can find me online right now. Feel free to join in any time if you want. That would be fun. We had some people join in yesterday. Had a lot of fun flying. You can check out a replay of yesterday's stream. That was really cool. So, yeah, now we're going to kind of cruise along here, and we're, uh, we're making good progress. We have maybe another, yeah, maybe another couple hours here to uh, get to our goal. Maybe maybe not quite that much. Depends on how much uh, turning we have to do. You can see the cloud base gets quite a bit lower as we head to the San Bernardino Mountains here. Also, pardon me while I eat this apple because I need some snacks. Got to keep the blood sugar up for the uh, optimal soaring uh, performance.
All right, and I'm back. I just uh, realized I could uh, totally mute the input while I was munching on that apple, so I figured that would be kind of obnoxious for the viewers to hear the uh, apple chewing sound on the mic, so... We made it across the Cone Pass. We're flying right over San Bernardino right now, San Bernardino Mountains. That's Lake Silverwood off on my left. Altitude is 11,400 feet. We're just getting a ton of buoyant air lift coming in and out of these clouds, so we can just fly super fast here, going 88 miles per hour, or sorry, uh, knots. Headed over uh, over the San Bernardino Mountains right now, just past the town of Crestline. And over on my left here is Lake Arrow Lake Arrowhead. Altitude eleven thousand five hundred feet. Town of uh, the city of San Bernardino. San Bernardino International Airport on my right. I am very familiar with this area. Those green hills over there is uh, that's Little Mountain. And Cal State San Bernardino. You can uh, see here. University, Cal State San Bernardino. My uh, buddy Dan Tuckweiler used to live in that house right there. <laughs> and my buddy Dusty Rhodes lives uh, like on that house over there. Cameron asks to have other players flying does it have to be live weather uh, no it does not have to be live weather Cameron um, which uh, uh, right now it would be nighttime if, it, if we had live weather 
and you can see other players flying because you can see all their uh, na all their uh, you know gamer tags here, right? So, um, so it doesn't have to be live weather. You just have to enable. Uh, you can you can set it to uh, private groups, or you can set it to all players. So right now I have it set to all players. But if we did something like a, if we were going to organize like a like a race or uh, or just a task or like, you know, if we wanted a private group, we we could do that. So. Um, so it doesn't have to be live weather. However, um, as far as I can see, it doesn't appear that there's any way to sort of sync the weather. We can't have everyone have the exact same weather. You So like ev all the players share the same space in the world, but the atmosphere is different for everybody. So you can set the same weather settings like when you, you know, when you load into the game, right? When you load into the sim. Um, but uh, to, to at least a certain degree, it's, you know, just kind of the weather or the cloud formations are uh, procedurally generated based on those conditions. At least that's my understanding of how it works. Uh, however, uh, despite that, it does seem um, to be pretty close enough that if, you know, if you and your friends both set the same weather, um, you know, the actual way the clouds look might be a little bit different. But the conditions will be similar enough that, you know, basically you're going to fly together just fine. So, um, And in real life flying, you know, soaring conditions, there's such a high degree of variability between, uh, you know, conditions from, you know, one spot of the sky to the next. That experience anyways, as everyone sort of has their own, their own weather from one moment to another. So, um, so yeah. Now look at this big blue hole we got across here. So we could sort of go out over the valley and sort of tag those clouds, or we could head towards uh, Big Bear. That's Big Bear Lake off on my left. Um, but I think I'm just gonna. I got performance. I'm at 11,600 feet, and listen to my vario. It's still going off like crazy. So there's just a ton of lift coming up over, a ton of buoyant air coming up over these mountains, these San Bernardino mountains here, which is totally realistic. It can be like that out here. Uh, so I'm just gonna push on. And uh, see, uh, kind of just see how uh, how much more quickly we can finish this guy up, because it's uh, going to be dinner time pretty soon. Maybe we have a uh, half hour, forty-five minutes of flight time left. Maybe less than that, really, with the way we're flying, 70, 70 knots. If we don't have to turn in any more thermals to get there. Um, so the next waypoint up ahead here is San Gorgonio, which is the tallest mountain peak in Southern California. It's at, I believe, 12,000 feet. Ooh, somebody in the Dark Star. Uh, yeah, they're boogieing along there. <laughs> uh, I think that speed at that altitude is going to break the aircraft, but, you know, we'll let him have his fun. And he just went through the mountain, so... Or maybe he went up through the Banning Pass. Cruising along the San Bernardino Mountains here. We took off uh, about um, took off about two and a half hours ago from Santa Barbara. Cli <coughs> Excuse me, climbed up in cloud, uh, up to cloud base there, about nine thousand feet, and there we were able to sort of just porpoise fly and eventually climb to eleven thousand feet as we went on glide to Santa Clarita and tagged Six Flags Magic Mountain. That was cool to see. Then made a right-hand turn, and you know, same thing. We're just getting this buoyant, lifty air all the way out to uh, the Griffith Observatory. Sorry, Griffith Observatory. And then, uh, then we went back to uh, Tag Mount Wilson, back to the San Gabriel Mountain Range. And then, uh, then we kind of started getting a little bit low, and had to uh, had to circle, had to climb a bit, so we could go to the next waypoint, which was Mount Baldy. At 10,000 feet, so I had to kind of get back up, and then got back up to like 11,000 feet, and uh, yeah, we've been just just flying in a straight line here, now uh, in some just uh, porpoise flying in buoyant air, at 11,400 feet uh, over the San Bernardino Mountains. This is an area where I've done quite a bit of hang gliding myself, so I know these mountains very well, and it's so cool to see it rendered in the in the sim, and kind of being exactly. As I remember it, that's Keller Peak off uh, off to my left here. This uh, this kind of slide formation and the, there's a road here. There's like a fire lookout up there. 
And Keller Peak is kind of notable in this range. You can see from here, it's kind of this last peak along the ridge, and then you have a big gap to cross. And uh, in a hang glider, that is a monster gap to cross where there's just a bunch of no man's land down there to land. In the sailplane here, we're going to fly across here no problem <laughs> uh, with the performance on this thing at 11,200 feet. Although, uh, we kind of got some sort of buoyant error, so we're kind of uh, not sinking out too much. But we do got to get across here, and we do want to climb because we want to fly over the top of San Gorgonio Peak, which is right up here on the left. You can see that peak there. That is the tallest mountain in Southern California, I do believe, at 12,000 feet. So we want to get up to there. That's our next point. And from San Gorgonio, then we're going to make a bit of a right turn across the Banning Pass which if you've ever driven from like LA to Phoenix, you'll, rem you'll know the Banning Pass. That's where all those windmills are. So it can be very windy in the pass. But across there, the next mountain across is San Jacinto, which is a good, uh, which is a good spot to be. Hey, Cloud Hopper, he's uh, Tom Lowe saying hi on, uh, on Twitch. Thanks for checking out, uh, Tom. I saw you online earlier, Tom. If uh, if you want to get in, but I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of wrapping this one up here. I got a couple of more turn points to hit, and I'm gonna go land, and then it's gonna be dinner time. So, having another fun flight here. Soaring is very cool at Microsoft Flight Simulator. This, uh, um, you know, I can't really speak to uh, to the realism too much, but it's definitely a lot of fun, and it definitely feels pretty similar. Uh, Tom Lowe says Vario is total energy can be beeping while losing altitude if air is going up. Interesting. Uh, okay. Um, well, uh, it may be that may be the case, but also I'm not going down, so <laughs> I've been just cl cruising along in Boyne Air. I guess I'm coming down now, but uh, yeah, we're uh, now we got the sink tone. So we got some clouds up ahead. We're gonna need to climb if I want to get up over San Gorgonio, but there's clouds right there, so that'll be good. As we cross this big gap here, that's Big Bear Lake off by my left wing. Uh, that is a very cool spot. Thanks for checking out the stream on Twitch, guys. If, uh, if you'll throw me a follow, I would appreciate that. Trying to build up the Twitch stream. Plan on doing a lot more glider flights, um, you know, kind of tutorial stuff, sort of show you guys where the cool uh, soaring is around uh, around the world. Uh, I've done uh, quite a bit of uh, hang gliding myself. Uh, never flown sailplanes. I've flown in a sailplane once, but uh, you know the uh, the principles are the same. And uh, so I kind of know where the cool soaring sites are and how to set the weather up to get uh, to get awesome epic uh, thermaling days like this. And uh, soaring flying is really cool. It's a really different type of flying. Uh, it's a different challenge than uh, any other type of powered flight. So um, there's a lot of really cool things we can do now with the with the new update with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator that includes uh, soaring. We can set up tasks. We could even kind of do some races. So it'll be a lot of fun to have you guys join me, do some uh, fly together, do some tasks together, maybe do some racing. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do. So I uh, had some people join me yesterday and we had a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, this is pretty neat. So now this is gonna kind of, kind of a tricky spot here because uh, my goal is that sort of bald peak there. That's San Gorgonio, or my next turn point rather. I'm too low to fly over it. 
Um, I should be able to get lift under these clouds, but I'm going to be kind of uh, back in behind this big ridge here. So if I don't get up, I could be in a, a rough spot where I'd have to kind of go out and around. And I could get, end up getting in the lee side of the, uh, of the ridge there, which would uh, be a bad place. Although we don't have super strong wind, so uh, generally should be okay. These gliders have crazy performance, so you will be able to glide out of there. And here's the lift, so never mind all that. <laughs> Maybe. Let's see if we can work this. I might be a little bit too far out from those clouds yet, but I'll climb here if I can get it. I lost it, so I'm going to turn a little bit steeper to get back, see if I can get back into it. That was pretty good, but not happening. There it is. Oh, that's a great idea. So Tom says he has uh, two computers. So we can run two simulators with identical presets and compare cloud pe uh, cloud positions. So that's interesting. I'm kind of assuming that the clouds and thus also the thermals are sort of procedurally generated. And uh, that would make their position and size and shape and everything just kind of a probability based on what the conditions are. So two computers right next to each other, two simulations running at the same time with the same setting should still show uh, at least somewhat different cloud patterns if that's the case. So I guess we can, uh, Tom will, Tom will uh, report back to us on that. That'll be interesting to see. A lot of air traffic over Southern California today in the simulator, tonight. Eleven thousand two hundred feet. Climbed a little bit. This thermal is sort of here. I'm not doing a very good job of finding and staying with the core. But the way I'm sort of climbing up this ridge face here just feels very realistic. Not super strong, but it's going up. And this is pretty similar to the other climb rates we've been seeing. Uh, today on this flight so as long as it's going up and it's consistent I'm okay with that it'd be real cool to get my buddy Owen Morris on here cause he's done a lot of flying in this area and I know he's gone down here to San Gorgonio on his hang glider probably been thermaling in this exact position so it'd be neat to uh, hear his reaction you say, oh yeah, there's a great thermal there every time. Although I suspect it would typically be stronger than this. There's some strong stuff. Love seeing the moon rendered there. That looks really cool. Flying nice and slow in this thermal. Probably don't want to get too much slower. 48 knots. Eleven thousand nine hundred feet. I think I want to start to drift downwind a little bit closer to these clouds. Kind of losing that thermal.
that was up that was ugly twelve thousand feet there we go climbing up here I think if we can get up to this cloud base here now twelve thirteen thousand feet we'll probably just make a really fast glide over to San Jacinto tag that and then we're just gonna go full spoilers and just bomb to uh, the airport at Palm Springs right down below see if we can finish this flight up Ooh, got a little slow there. This wispy cloud kind of just forming right in front of me. That's super cool. Let's fly a little bit closer to these clouds here. Might just kind of porpoise fly here underneath and just go right past San Gorgonio, the peak. Ooh, there's the strong lift there. All right, turning that. Ah. You're in it, and then you're out of it. You think, oh, I can get it, I can get it. Nope. I want to bring it around here. That was counterproductive. There's some strong lift, but I kind of—I don't want to turn it. I don't want to disappear in this cloud. I want to—I want to have San Gorgonio in uh, in sight here. So, let's see if I can just kind of fly right underneath it. That's what we call cloud suck. Whereas, right as you get to the bottom of the cloud, the uh, the uh, strength of the lift increases, and you just get sucked right up into it. But we have a sailplane. We can just fly real fast and get underneath here. And we can just fly fast and probably not lose any altitude. We'll just cruise right by. Yeah, there's San Gorgonio. Let's go down a little bit and climb. So we definitely can glide to Palm Springs Airport from here really easily. But we need to make a right turn and head across to where it says custom. 23.33 nautical miles. That's San Jacinto. Next big peak across uh, the Banning Pass here, and then we'll uh, and then we'll call this one good. Then we'll then we'll fly down there and land in Palm Springs. I kind of think it would be fun to thermal here at San Gorgonio. I know. Let's have a turn. Let's have a turn. Let's see what we can get.
There it is, San Gorgonio. What a cool looking mountain that is. Might just uh, try to top this lift out here and see how high we can get. And then we can just fly super fast over to San Gorgonio and then down into land. Maybe that was the top of the lift right there. <laughs> Ah, there's clouds off on my right. Look at that. So we can get up a little bit more. <laughs> it's hard to thermal with the uh, outside view. That didn't work too well. All right, 13,500 feet. We're going to make a right turn. We're going to fly towards our last turn point, San Gorgonio. Tag that, and then we pretty much just dive, dive into Palm Springs Airport which is kind of right at the base on the other side. We could glide a lot, lot farther with this altitude than there, but uh, that was our goal, so we'll just do that. And now we've got buoyant lifting air here as we're right at cloud base. We're above it a little bit, and uh, so we can fly pretty fast. I can fly a lot faster than this. This has been a really fun flight. Thanks for joining me on the stream, guys. I've been having uh, fun. Started out at Santa Barbara, California, about uh, two and a half hours ago. Climbed right up the cloud base and, and now flying uh, pretty much traversed all of Southern California along the mountains that border it to the north. We tagged Six Flags Magic Mountain, then to the Griffith Observatory, and then back to Mount Wilson. And then, uh, then we flew to Mount Baldy. Had to uh, do some climbing and a thermal to get up to uh, be able to fly over that. And then we had a nice long glide over to San Gorgonio, where we just passed. Again, had to do a little bit of climbing to uh, be able to get over the top of it. And now we're flying uh, a little bit southeast, heading 150 across the Banning Pass. And that is if you've ever drone, uh, driven, you know, like from L.A., from SoCal to uh, Arizona to Phoenix, you've been on the... 10 freeway through the Banning Pass, which is where all those uh, windmills are. And uh, so we're going to cross the Banning Pass and tag San Jacinto, which is the next big peak across here. And then from there, we're going to make a left turn and then uh, kind of just dive into uh, uh, Palm Springs Airport, which is kind of at the base on the uh, eastern side of these mountains here. Uh, we could uh, glide a lot farther than that, but... That's about as far as we uh, want to go today. That was the goal that I set up. That was the task. And uh, so maybe another half an hour or so to get there and get down. And then, uh, then it's dinner time. So that'll be a good uh, be a good flight, good day. If you aren't following me on Twitch, uh, I would super appreciate that. If you're on uh, YouTube, there's a pinned link in the chat. Uh, or just look me up on Twitch, Designed by Dave. I'm trying to do a lot more streaming of this, especially with the, uh, with the uh, sailplanes here. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can do with sailplanes, with gliding, with soaring flight, especially with the multiplayer uh, 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 abilities here in uh, Flight Simulator. And uh, me and my buddy Tom Lowe have been kind of playing with that uh, the last couple days. Uh, we can link up, we can just fly tasks together, and we could probably even do uh, racing, which would be uh, really could be really interesting. And uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. Of course, you know, anytime you're going to fly with friends, it's you know more fun than flying by yourself. And um, you know, also if you're uh, watching the stream, you know, join in with me and fly. It'd be really cool. You can find me online, designed by Dave. Is my gamer tag. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll try to do, like, a schedule. 
I think for sure I'll be on at least on um, uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening, probably around like six o'clock uh, Pacific time. I'll we'll try to think of another fun uh, challenge uh, task uh, uh, before then. There you can see the windmills down there. They kind of they kind of come and go the way they're rendered kind of funkily, depending on the way you look at it. some like weird aliasing going on. But they're definitely there. Yeah, you recognize that if you've driven through there. Another flight I want to do is from uh, San Bernardino to Las Vegas, which. Uh, Totally doable uh, in real life. Uh, I have friends that have basically done that in uh, hang gliders. Although not quite to Las Vegas because there's airspace, so you have to like, you know, like Henderson, like south of Las Vegas, you know. But in the simulator, we can do whatever the heck we want, so, you know, we can go land on the strip or something like that. <laughs> or go, go buzz the Cosmopolitan and then, uh, yeah. Altitude is 13,200 feet. Kind of getting a, a buoyant, buoyant uh, glide across the Banning Pass here. As we head to, uh, head to my last turn point, which is San Gorgonio Mountain. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think I might have actually accidentally labeled a spot past the peak. So I uh, might just fly past the peak and then... Uh, then I'm just going to go turn and land here at Palm Springs, which is uh, kind of just at the base on the eastern side, just to the left of the mountain there. And that'll be uh, that'll be good enough for this flight. That'll be a great flight. Uh, flight time so far is about 2 hours and 40 minutes. And so maybe total flight time might be around 3, three hours, 3.15 or something like that. Check out yesterday's stream, too. That was a lot of fun. Uh, at the beginning of the stream, uh, I set up a... Um, uh, I showed a tutorial kind of on how I set up the weather for epic uh, thermaling flights like this. So you can check that out if you're having trouble finding thermals or you don't know uh, what kind of weather or what kind of sites are going to generate epic soaring flying. You can check that out and that will uh, that'll show you what I do. And uh, so I know how to set up really epic conditions. And so another thing to work on is to uh, kind of try to figure out how to set up challenging, con challenging, maybe more realistic conditions. These conditions are not uh, not entirely unrealistic. We can definitely get altitudes like this in Southern California. Um, the locations of the clouds and the lift is uh, a bit unrealistic. We typically would only find uh, cumulus clouds like these if we had clouds in SoCal over the... Um, uh, over the mountains, or it would be focused or sort of concentrated over the mountains, and um, you know, which is kind of where we want to fly, anyways. That's that's um, that's sort of the interesting location, and that's where you're out of airspace, generally away from you know airliners and things. So, um, but it is also super fun. Maybe not maybe not super realistic, but it is super fun. So, you know, uh, I think that's kind of. I think that's kind of seems sort of at the heart of what the developers of at least this version of Microsoft Flight Simulator are, are kind of going for is, is, you know, the realism is there, but uh, generally it seems, uh, at least the impression I get from the aviation community as a whole is that, you know, it's lacking certain features to make it, you know, really a real like one-to-one -one simulator. But uh, they're sort of less interested in that and more interested in stuff like this where you just have these really beautiful looking clouds and the multiplayer aspects we can just have have a lot of fun sort of flying together and and uh, enjoying this so to me that makes it very much worthwhile so we are making good progress here got about a 10 knot crosswind about 90 degree cross 
as we come across the Banning Pass here. Flying now uh, southeast, heading 148. Palm Springs down there on my left. And I can see the airport, that's where I'm going to go land. <laughs> no mouth but must scream, says, uh, love the variometer EDM song. Yeah, when it's, you know, the best, the best song that you can hear is when it's just, uh, when it's just ringing, when it's just beeping at you and you're just climbing in a crazy, a crazy, uh, thermal. Right now we could just turn it off because, you know, it's kind of just telling me the, uh, the sinking tone, which I don't really need to hear, um. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes that can be kind of annoying, but uh, if you love it, then I'm not going to turn it off. <laughs> yeah, somebody, uh, somebody with some uh, electronic music skills, go ahead and uh, sample a Vario for me and then uh, make, me, uh, make me a sick uh, EDM track with it. That would be fun. Altitude is 12,700 feet, and we're getting pretty close to our turn point here of San Jacinto. Another tall peak in uh, the mountains in Southern California. Off to my left here is Palm Springs and High Desert, and the Banning Pass where the uh, windmills are. And off to my right is Southern California. Uh, off to my right, kind of behind me, is the city of Beaumont. And uh, I think this is San Jacinto National Forest. I'm not sure if that's the same name of the forest uh, as the peak, but something like that. It's like something you would hear from those big ass analog setups, yeah? Yeah. Although this thing right now, I, um, this thing is so it's so all over the place and I think that's kind of where you're getting the uh, the uh, EDM song kind of set up and I, and I, I don't know if this is a setting I, I can look in the um, I'll play with it later on um, it may have the like the uh, the uh, measurement interval duration set way too short uh, but I th my experience with varios is typically they don't we don't sound like this we get much more of a uh, uh, much more of a con more of a consistent tone with like more of a smoothing applied or something like that maybe you'd say that's kind of the way they have it set up in this airplane this is a third-party airplane uh, you can get from the marketplace discus 2c very cool airplane uh, this is one of the uh, one of the colorways that come with it which uh, I like <laughs> it looks pretty neat very flashy uh, maybe that'll match your uh, EDM song <laughs> uh, uh, the color so go with it so it's very rave like right so uh, um, yeah this is my I'm in my rave wear um, but the uh, the built-in um, the gliders that come with uh, the uh, latest update to uh, flight simulator uh, the varios are more of what I'm used to it much more of a consistent tone so Altitude 12,300 feet. And this is a little bit sketchy here. I'm going to go disappear into this cloud, and I know there's a big mountain in front of me, but I don't think it's uh, any uh, lower, any higher than 12,000 feet. So um, might fly right into the mountain here. We'll uh, we'll see. This is generally a, a not a woo. Ooh, we got some turbulence in here. Woo. This is rough. Ooh, Mamma Mia. Wow, that's oh I'm in the am I in the lee site? Oh yeah. Oh whoa whoa. Woo hoo hoo Woo come out of there. Woo did you see the wind there? It was like thirty. Wow. 
Wow, that was scary. I got in the lee side here. Yeah, that's the peak. And uh, yeah, now I'm in like wicked sinking air. And I had to maneuver quickly, or else that would have been the end of uh, that would have been the end of this flight. Okay, yeah, that was sketchy. Like I said, wow, that was scary. Wow, that's so cool that that's rendered because uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what would happen. All right, now this is the time. Uh, if this was a real flight, I would be about due to uh, change my underpants. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the spoilers on and go land here. <laughs> Uh, I pretty much got to my goal. That's where I wanted to get to. Man, that was cool. Uh, that was scary. Wow. Yeah, you don't want to get in the uh, in the lee side rotor uh, of uh, of mountains when you're uh, in an aircraft, particularly in a per particularly in a light uh, wing loading aircraft like a sailplane. So uh, let's not do that again. All right. So I got some spoilers out. And we're just going to burn some altitude here and go down there and land at the uh, Palm Springs Airport. Whew, I need to, yeah, I need a change of underpants after that. Sorry, boys. <laughs> and, uh, wow. Yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty tricky uh, crosswind here, too, to land in, so... That might be uh, might be a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit cross. That's okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attempt the beat up landing. I haven't done this yet in the uh, sailplane. Um, a beat up landing is where you come in downwind, just hauling ass as fast as it's safe to fly. And you buzz, you just skim right along the pavement, right along the uh, runway. And then when you reach the end of the runway, you climb. Because sailplanes retain so much energy, you have uh, plenty of energy to do a climb and do a 180, 180 degree turn and come back and land on the runway into the wind. So, um, yeah, beat up landings are very cool to watch. And it should be pretty fun to do. But I'm going to use uh, a lot of spoiler here because I want to just get down. I'm going to dive and then I'll go into a right hand turn. And then we'll buzz the uh, buzz the tower or the runway. Got the city of Palm Springs down here. Coming into Palm Springs Airport. I'm going to go full spoilers. This thing really comes out of the sky. Which is awesome. Now I'm going to pull some spoilers back, and you can see my airspeed coming up as I pull spoilers back. kind of use pitch to bring the altitude down and then I can kind of control my airspeed with the spoilers I can just kind of put them up and the airspeed will come down but uh, I tried to do this the other day and I broke the airplane because I flew too fast so I disabled that feature so <laughs> we shouldn't have that problem today Spoilers are all the way back, holding a lot of forward pressure on the stick to keep uh, coming down here. Trying to keep the speed below that red line. But we need a lot of speed because we need a lot of energy. All right, spoilers are all the way down. A little more spoilers because that speed's coming up. Spoilers away.
Alright, now we climb out. Landing gear down. So left, and then we need to come around to the left. Oh, I'm gonna have a wicked tailwind. A tailwind down here? Should have checked the wind before I did this. <laughs> Whoops. Now I need a lot of spoilers. Bring it around. Oh, it's about cross. There we go. Look at that. Runway 31L. Definitely got to be crabbing as we're coming in here. That's okay. Keep the airspeed up. And we'll start to slow down. And ground looped it again. That's right. It's because I wanted to stop there. Look at that. We just back into our parking space. That's some pro moves right there. That's how you do it. <laughs> All right, we're down. Landing in Palm Springs. What a fun flight that was. Ah, oh, man, that was cool. All right, thanks for checking out the stream, you guys. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, if you're uh, still hanging around, throw me a follow on uh, Twitch. That would be cool. Going to do uh, a lot more of this kind of stuff in the future. And uh, hope we uh, come flying with me. All right.